Welcome to Location, the local news program. I'm Patrick Gallagher. And I'm Melissa Menser, and here's your news now. And these are your top stories in the Locator. This year, Cabrini will host the 2011 Southeastern Pennsylvania Consortium for Higher Education's Honors Conference. The conference is made up of eight schools in the area with the goal of enhancing the collegiate experience for those who attend the schools. The organization was started over 10 years ago and will hold its year, this year's meeting on March 26. The conference will model a graduate conference where attendees will present their independent research projects. Habitat for Humanity of Montgomery County has been helping area families for the past 21 years. The group provides housing to low-income families with no interest or mortgages. Habitat has provided homes to 181 people and 49 homes in such areas as is Norristown, Pottstown, and Upper Dublin. Catboard will be hosting its second Cabrini's Got Talent next month. They've recently held auditions, so let's check out to see the performers now. Hey guys, I am Melissa Webb on set with Location here in Grace Hall giving you a behind the scenes look at the auditions for Cabrini's Got Talent. Here's a sneak preview of what's in store for Catboard's biggest event of the semester. Catboard is hosting its second annual Cabrini's Got Talent on April 14th. This year, however, they did things a little differently. On February 22nd and 24th, auditions were held where students showcased their various talents before enthusiastic judges. Anyway, friends came to support each other with their performances, and surprisingly, the judges became happier as the night progressed. Let's check in with some performers to see how the experience went. Well, we both choreographed it together, and I think it went well. Or do you have anything? I think it went really well. We added the gymnastics to like make it different. As the night came to an end, the judges found one performance that they particularly liked. guys what did you think be sure to check out this event april 14th at the dixon center back to you at the news desk cabrini students faculty and staff took the chance to get in shape in february in celebration of national heart health awareness month up to 25 percent of all fatalities in the country are due to cardiovascular disease according to the american heart association the Office of Health and Wellness hosted Go Red for Heart Health Day with the importance set on heart health. And those are your top stories in the Locator. For more information, <coughs> pick up a copy around campus or visit thelocator.com. And now let's take a look back in history. In 1889, the most common household drug, aspirin, was registered by the pharmaceutical company Bayer & Company. The drug was originally made from bark found on willow trees. Aspirin has been used for centuries, dating back to ancient Greece when it was used to cure headaches, pains, and fever. In 1876, a 29-year-old man, Alexander Graham Bell, patented the telephone. Bell worked alongside his father, who used equipment to teach speaking to the deaf. Here he developed ideas which later led him to the invention of the telephone. In 1959, Barbie was introduced for the first time at the American Toy Fair in New York City. 11 inches tall with a waterfall of blonde hair, Barbie was the first mass-produced toy doll in the United States with adult features. The woman behind Barbie was Ruth Handler, who co-founded Mattel with her husband in 1945. After seeing her young daughter ignore her baby dolls to play make-believe with paper dolls of adult women, Handler realized there was an important niche in the market for a toy that allowed little girls to imagine the future. And that was your look back in history. And now let's take a trip around the world. Loyal troops of Colonel Muammar al Qaddafi attacked rebel troops in Bin Javad, Libya on Sunday. The rebels who were outgunned spread throughout the desert and fought back but were forced to retreat again. More than a dozen ambulances sped to a hospital in nearby town carrying wounded and dead rebel fighters. A car bomb exploded near an intelligence agency in eastern Pakistan on Tuesday, 
killing at least 24 people and wounding more than 132 people. The bomb detonated near a gas station and Pakistan Taliban took responsibility for the attack. Civilians and military targets across the country have been attacked while Pakistan has been battling extremism and militancy. Tuesday's blast was the first major strike in recent years in Pakistan. And now's your trip around the world. Let's check in with Holly for sports. I hear basketball is going out to Ohio, Holly. They are, Pat. For the first time since the 2001-2002 season, the Cabrini men's basketball team has advanced to the Sweet 16 round of the Division III NCAA tournament. The Cavs beat both New Jersey City University and SUNY Purchase this past weekend at the Nerney Fieldhouse here at Cabrini College. In the game against New Jersey City, Don Perello led all scorers with 28 points. And in the game against SUNY Purchase, Corey Lemons led all scorers with 29 points. The Cavs are set to take on the College of Wooster this Friday in Wooster, Ohio. Ali Rodolico had the chance to speak with head coach Marcus Kahn about the upcoming game. Let's take a look at what he had to say. What started out as 64 teams is now narrowed down to the Sweet 16, and Cabrini men's basketball team is one of them. On Friday night, they'll face off against Wooster College out in Ohio, where they compete for something that only some teams can dream about. I had the opportunity to get an interview with head coach Marcus Kahn. Let's take a look and see what he has to say about the upcoming game. Here with head coach Marcus Kahn of the men's basketball team, who is about to go over to Ohio to play in the Sweet 16 for the second time in school history. How excited are you about this? Oh, very excited. It's such a good opportunity for our players, our program, our school. I think it's good for Cabrini in general uh, to be put into the, to the, uh, the, the field with just 16 teams left. It's a great feeling. Our guys have worked hard to get there, so we're looking forward to it. So at home, since you've been here, you're 44 and two right now. How are you going to carry the success that you've had at home over to the away team with their fans and there, everything like that? What is it that you're going to be doing? Well, I think that's just a new challenge for us. We're good at home, we're comfortable here. So now we got to go beat some good teams on the road. Well, we, we've done it here. We proved that this weekend that we can do that. Now we just got to go do it in their place. It will be a challenge, but not one that we can't overcome. So you guys had the first round of the NCAAs here on Friday night. Then you played right after on Saturday night. The guys obviously were tired. You were down by 13 at halftime. What was it that you were telling them they just had to turn around to get the victory for the second half? It was, it was more of just bringing the energy that we, we knew we had in us. Uh, we just weren't playing hard enough in the first half. They were taking the fight to us on our floor. And we said, hey, we got 20 minutes left potentially in our season. you got to leave it all out there. And I think we just came a little more energized in the, in, the, in the second half. It wasn't really an X and O thing, just more energy that we brought. All right. So what would you say would be the main message that you're telling them all this week to get prepared for this big game? Well, really enjoy the moment. I, enjoy the fact that we are in the Sweet, six, sweet 16, that not, you know, 16 teams playing. We're one of them in the entire country right now. And uh, it should be a good feeling. Enjoy the moment. But for two hours a day, we've got to focus on, uh, on the task at hand, and hopefully we continue playing. All right, well, good luck. I hope you guys win. You're going to do great. Oh, thank you very much. All right, thanks, guys. Back to you at the news desk. In other Cabrini sports news, the men's lacrosse team has opened its season with an 0-2 record for the first time since the 2005 season. So far, they have lost to both Haverford College and Lynchburg College. Their next game is scheduled for March 9th at 3.30 on the Edith Robb Dixon Field. That's all I have for you this week. Be sure to tune into location every week for your Cabrini Sports News. Thanks, Holly. And now let's check in with Danielle for your red carpet rants. Hey, guys. Danielle here with your entertainment news. I know you're probably expecting to hear the latest about the Charlie Sheen scandal, but quite frankly, I'm tired of hearing about it and I'm giving it up for Lent. Or maybe I'm one of the goddesses. I'll let you decide. But on a side note, don't worry. I did apply to be Charlie Sheen's social media intern and explained it in 75 characters or less. Fingers crossed. In other news, Justin Bieber has big plans on the horizon. The 17-year-old recently leaked information that he, is go he isn't going to shave for a month so that he can show the world that he can, in fact, grow a mustache. Well, Justin, on behalf of all of us here at Location, we wish you the best of luck with that endeavor. Well, that's all I have for you this week. It's time for my daily dose of Tiger Blood with Charlie Sheen. So I'll see you guys next week for more entertainment news. I'm Danielle McLaughlin. Back to you at the news desk. Thanks, Danielle. And now let's go to Ian with Just a Thought. Hey, it's Ian with Just a Thought. It used to be that when you bought a car, a five disc CD changer was a big deal. But now things have gotten a bit more complicated. Take the new Chevy Cruze, for example. That's C-R-U-Z-E. It will read your Facebook news feed for you. So when your best friend loses his cow in Farmville, you'll know instantly as you plow into a telephone pole. 
Awesome. What the people who developed this failed to realize is that no one takes your newsfeed that seriously. And if you do, chances are you have a smartphone. In that case, pull over and check it. Having my car read my Facebook is totally unnecessary. I have a 1999 Pontiac Grand Am. You know what's a luxury for me? The air conditioning and the heat working or the windows going down. That's all I need along with the whole, you know, car working thing. Call me old fashioned, but I'll check my Facebook on a computer. Remember those? I'm Ian and that's just a thought. Thanks Ian. Well, that's all we have time for this week. Be sure to check us out at thelocator.com and subscribe to our podcast on iTunes. I'm Melissa Menser. And I'm Patrick Gallagher. That's all we have for you this week, Cabrini.